Madam President, I rise to talk about a moral obligation and a national security obligation. We are leaving Afghanistan after 20 years, the longest war in this country's history. During the entirety of that 20 years, there were brave people in Afghanistan, Afghanistan people, who helped us, who were translators, who were guides, who, were assist, who assisted us in the struggle against terrorism and in the struggle against the Taliban. And as we leave, those people are in grave danger. The Taliban has made no secret of the fact that they're in grave danger. They have already started killing them. If we leave without providing for the safety of those people, providing them a way to maintain their lives, it will be a stain on this country that will exist for generations. Not only is it a moral and ethical obligation, though it's a national security obligation, because if we don't take care of the people who took care of us, who is going to come to our aid the next time? Who is going to come to the aid of the Americans who turn their backs on those that risk their lives on behalf of this country? The answer is no one. So this is not only an ethical and moral obligation, this is a matter of national security in terms of our standing in the world and our ability to work with allies and others against adversaries of this country and other countries in the world. The average time, I'm told, it now takes to process the paperwork for one of the people that we're trying to get out of Afghanistan through the special visa program is 600 days. We're going to have a military presence in Afghanistan less than 90 days. There's a mismatch there. We've got to take steps to protect these people. Now, maybe it's surging. We've talked about military surges. Let's surge some paperwork, people, to get this work done faster. But I don't believe we're going to be able to do that. Now, by the way, I'm not saying we open the door to everyone. There are 18,000 people on their list. That's not to mention their families, that we just open the door and say, everybody, come here. Because as we know, Afghanistan has been the home to very dangerous terrorist groups, Al Qaeda, ISIS, and others. So we do have to have some processing. But we've got to be able to process these people in a way that protects us in terms of our national security, but also gets them out of harm's way. One possibility, and I'm delighted that just a few hours ago, the president mentioned that he's going to be working with other countries to find a safe place to move these people while we're doing the processing. I think that's exactly what we have to do. We can't just hope that when we leave in, in August or as September 11th is the deadline the president has established, that we just hope that the Taliban won't take over Kabul, the Taliban won't take over other regions of the country and start murdering the people that helped us. This isn't a speculative problem. This isn't something we think may happen. They've told us it's going to happen. And, I've been learned all my life, believe people when they tell you what they're going to do. And this is one of those situations. We know what's coming. And if what ends up coming is a bloodbath, that blood is on our hands. I've talked about the national security, but I think more important, this is a moral and ethical obligation to meet the safety needs of those people that helped us. I've had friends who have fought in Afghanistan, and they are agonized about this. They're agonized about what's going to happen to people that they know, that they've worked with, that have put their lives on the line for America. What's going to happen to those people when we leave? This is a moment of test for this country. This is a trial for us. And history is going to judge us as to how we meet this test. And it's, it's, <laughs> this isn't uh, something, we're not talking about landing a man on the moon or some kind of terrible technological challenge. This is just putting resources in the right place and making the arrangements to take care of these people. It can be done. 
It can be done. And if it isn't done, shame on us. I know that's a phrase that's often used, but it fits in this case. If we don't protect those who protected us, shame on us. On December 1st, 1862, Abraham Lincoln came to this capital to talk about the course of the Civil War and what was happening, and he was trying to move the Congress out of some the politics as usual as they, as they dealt with this extraordinary crisis. His final words echo over the last 100 plus years, and I think they apply exactly today. Here is what Abraham Lincoln said. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. We of this Congress and this administration will be remembered in spite of ourselves. No personal significance or insignificance can spare one or the other of us. The fiery trial which we now pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. This is a test of the moral integrity of this country. We must, we must defend those who have defended us from a peril that we know is imminent. This fiery trial through which we pass this summer will light us down. We in the Congress and the administration, as Lincoln said, will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. Mr. President, I yield the floor.